In this lesson, we will talk about adding depth of field to our scene. Okay, so to add some depth of field to our scene, we're actually going to go into our camera settings and change the depth of field there. Now, maybe if you've watched some other lessons that we have, we sometimes maybe will fake depth of field just by adding kind of a vignette blur around the edge. But because we have so much depth that we've actually created in our scene with the Z position, I'm going to change the depth in my camera to really help sell the look that we're getting um, some kind of out of focus parts of our image. So I'm going to drop down the camera options right there. And we're going to go to camera options, which are underneath the transform properties. And we see depth of field is right there. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. And for now, nothing really changes too drastically, but we're going to start playing with our focus distance and our aperture to really make this scene have a feel that there is a lot of depth happening. And depth of field can really change the whole mood of your scene. You can create a look maybe that something is a miniature based on what kind of depth of field you use, or maybe you just want to add a little bit of... Um, emphasis to a particular part of your scene. So we really want to emphasize this cabin here. So that's something we want to keep in mind of something that we're going to be focusing on to just kind of add that realism and again direct our viewers eye to the thing that we feel like is important. So let's start playing with this focus distance and aperture value. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change my focus distance right here to an even 2500. So I'm just going to type that in. And now I'm going to start kind of playing with my aperture. So I'm going to just kind of move my cursor somewhere right here at the beginning so I can still see a lot of my scene. And then we'll just start dragging the aperture value up. And the higher that I drag this, the narrower my depth of field is going to become. So we kind of start to see now that this uh, mountain up here is getting blurrier and maybe this edge of our water here is blurry, but we are really getting a focus on this uh, value here in our hills. So I'm just going to continue dragging that up to really emphasize that. So right in there around a thousand, we really are starting to feel the focus is on this hill area and a lot of the other parts of our image are out of focus and that's another reason I really like using particular as my uh, particle generator because it recognizes the depth of field of my camera and blurs out those particles so that's very interesting uh, the way just the way that that uh, interacts together with my camera so I'm gonna go in and change this option right here where I'm looking at my time as uh, seconds and change it to frames so I'm just going to hold down control and click that right there and that's just gonna help me kind of measure this a, in a little bit of a different way you don't have to measure yours in that way if you don't want to but right here around frame 70 we're going to maybe show a little bit of a shift in the depth of field of our camera so we said earlier we want to kind of focus in on our cabin so maybe right around here is where we're going to sort of start that shift so we kind of maybe start out with the hill and focus and then shift our focus to the cabin so that's just going to create a little bit of an interesting look. So I'm not going to change my aperture too much more at this point, but I do want to change the focus distance. And what that's going to do is just say, right now I'm focusing at this distance. And then when I set another key, I'm going to be focusing at this distance up here where uh, my cabin is. So because my cabin is further away, I'm going to drag that value up. So let's go ahead and just set our focus distance key right there. And now we can just move forward a little bit in time and change that focus distance to focus past those hills and more on the cabin. So it's not really going to take that much difference. And as you remember, these are only about 200 pixels apart. So if I just drag this up to somewhere around 2800, that's going to look pretty good right about there. Now I'm going to drag my aperture down to about a thousand. And if this is still looking a little bit out of focus, I can pull that focus distance back and just kind of keep checking it until I get this to a point that my cabin really looks like it's in focus. 
Okay, so right in there, right around um, 2,500 or so, we're really getting this look that our cabin is in focus. Maybe pull that down just a little bit more. And then here when we're at this earlier point in time, um, that we're not getting a huge shift. So let's maybe pull this focus distance back a little bit more earlier. So now we're really getting a crisp focus on our hills. So this is just a little bit of a guessing game to kind of figure out exactly where that focus distance needs to be to get you the best shift in your depth of field. So we're right in here around 2300 to get these hills in focus. And then when we move forward, we see that now our cabin is in focus. So that's really going to give us an interesting look in our scene as we kind of zoom in and that focus changes. So maybe something else I want to do now is maybe add a little bit wider depth of field very subtly towards the end of my uh, scene. So I'm going to set the aperture keyframe right there on the same focus distance uh, keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward in time. And I'm doing this because I want my cabin to stay in focus, even though my camera is getting closer in my scene. Remember, we tracked forward in Z space. So now my focus distance is past that cabin. So I need to kind of bring that back towards the cabin so that that stays in focus and it doesn't just kind of move out and focus at some random place in between my mountain and my cabin. So I'm going to keep pulling that back till I get the focus back on the cabin. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to turn that aperture down to 900 to give me just a little bit wider depth of field. And you see that cleared up right in there. Okay, so let's just continue kind of pulling this focus distance back until we really get our cabin as crisp looking as possible. And it's possible that if you zoom in enough, you may get um, a lower value for your focus distance than you even had at this point in time. So that's just maybe going to be based on exactly what you set your camera to whenever you were uh, zooming in on your scene. Okay, so let's take a look at a RAM preview of this and just kind of see what we're working with here and if we need to tweak any more of our settings. And if you need to kind of just make your area bigger here so you can see as much sheen as possible, go right ahead. Sometimes I even pull my composition window outside of my area just so I can really focus on my layers when I'm working with a project like this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the zero key to RAM preview my scene. And we see kind of starting out there at the beginning, we don't have this quite so in focus just because that focus distance is changing. So we could set another keyframe at the beginning of our scene just so that focus um, is really remaining on our hills right there. So right about now is when we start to see that shift. So this goes out of focus and our cabin comes into focus. And I'm just watching to make sure that the cabin itself stays in focus and that the focus distance doesn't really fluctuate too much between the mountains and the hills once our camera continues to pan. So that's pretty interesting right there with the, the focus distance that we've uh, keyed right there. So now I just want to go back in and add that last keyframe that I was talking about at the very beginning of my scene just to make sure that my hills that are close here stay in focus. So this focus distance is going to be much closer to the camera. And right there we see that that's maybe a little bit too close. So let's just kind of crank that up a little bit right there until I really start to get a more crisp look at those hills. And this is at about 2300 right there. So if we move back, maybe turn this to 2400, see what that looks like. And I'll just keep dragging that up back towards 26. It's probably going to be somewhere in between the 25 and 26 area. So right in about there. And then as I move forward, we keep that um, those closer hills in focus, even though my camera is moving. 
So that's some pretty interesting depth of field that we've created there. And if you maybe wanted to key something like a rack focus where it goes all the way out of focus and then comes back in, that's something that you could do. There's a lot of options, um, but because the scene is so peaceful, I wanna just kind of set a mood with this shift in depth of field that we are just kind of lazily moving through the scene and there's no really fast uh, motions that are happening that are a big distraction just from the peacefulness that we're trying to capture here. So in this lesson, we learned that depth of field can not only help us add realism to our scene, but how different kinds of depth of field can set the mood that we're trying to achieve.